Tell you what, I'm just going to put a little bit of tape on the lens to behave like a, uh, well, like a hood. Because there's light affecting the, um, well, the picture. This is going to be my lens hood. <laughs> just get, because look, the light's above you, see. What's happening is it's reflecting on the, uh, the lens. But anyway, welcome to Wally Bar. And today I am, well... I'm trying to upcycle this this desk. I've already started. I already fit this old bit of rotten looking wood at the top here, which is glued and screwed on. I cleaned up with an angle grinder with a wire brush in it. And now um, I want to do well, I want to fix all the other boards. I prepared them all, these old boards. It's a bit of a mixture of old oak boards and um, various pines, old larch, what have you. Yeah, from old pallets, so I'm just using what we've got. I'll put that there. I think I might do it. Just try and stop some of that light hit. That's better. Is that better? It is. There's light coming from somewhere. Put that way around. <laughs> oh, that's better. Anyway, um, so what I've done is I've prepared these boards up at the bottom here, as you can see. There's a selection of old pallets, these old shutters that I, ha I had, oak, sh oak shutters, probably over 100 years old, in hell of a state, look. but I cleaned them up using, sort of say cleaned them up, <laughs> I attacked them with a wire brush, not any old wire brush, but a wire brush that happens to be, well it was mounted, this one here, inside, onto an angle grinder, and I've ferociously cleared all the old soft material out of the wood, so it can become a little bit more aesthetic. And it's only a cosmetic, it's not structural anything like that. Not in the slightest. It's literally just to try and create, um, well, make it a little bit cooler, I suppose. And this is to go in my studio upstairs. Because it's just a crappy old um, desk that we, we had kicking about. And um, I just want to make it a little bit cooler. <laughs> so effectively what I'm going to do is, or bait all today, all I'm going to do is Literally fix all these boards and then try and do it as aesthetic as you possibly can. I've already cut them all to length because um, I thought that'd be a bit boring. And uh, how we're going to fix it, various ways we can do it. We can do what I've done up here is, well, you see all these holes, they can be plugged. The wooden plugs will go in those holes. So that's screwed on and glued to that. I had to straighten the top up because for some reason the hole it, it sagged and the, the bottom, bottom was kicking out at the bottom. And I created a, a sag on the top, so I've straightened it up the best that I can. Because it looked, looked, looked ridiculous, to say the least. And um, I've, like, so I've prepared all these boards up, and we're going to fix them on there. And we're going to be fixing them using a bit of everything. My nail gun. This is a little 18, uh, uh, no, 18 gauge nail gun, which needs a bit of TLC, because it feels like it's coming apart. And also, I might be using my bigger nail gun as well, but I don't know if I'll need that. But then also the plugs, which I'll be using this air drill here, which has a little plug cutter incorporated, with that account sink incorporated in, in the drill bit. And the ideal thing about that is it's, it's all done in one hit, isn't it? And that's how I drill these holes. Yeah, so you've got the pilot hole, so the pilot, I've got the clearance hole, and also the hole for the plug to go into. So we'll be doing that as well. Shouldn't take very long, I hope. And I hope this got a heat, electric heat on down here because it's flipping freezing today. So I hope it's not going to be too uh, noisy. I've got my wireless mic on, so hopefully it should, uh, you know, hear my beautiful voice instead. <gasps> oh, wouldn't you say? Oh dear. I hope the sound's okay. I better just check, you guys and girls. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Hello, my dog. How you doing, buddy? Oh, did you hear about Farage? Oh dear. He got cancelled again. <laughs> That's, that doesn't make me tickle. No. Poor old Farage. I do feel sorry for him. Nothing seems to be going right. Although he had his, um, <laughs> oh, his, uh, what was that? His GB News thing with, uh, well, his Trump cancel culture or something's going on about. I don't know, something with Trump. So, if you sort of get the look, I was originally going to have, I was thinking about doing sort of like this. Originally, well, no, it's like that sort of thing originally, and then go, then the rest will be um, in the, the old 
pine boards from the, from the pallets. But I think I'm just going to do almost alternative, alternative, alternate. As it is alternative. Right. The other thing I've got to watch out for is where there's boards that have a hole in it, like such as that one. Oh, you can see through it. Oh, I can see you. Where it's got holes in it, I've, I've, with this light colour behind it, it's going to look, look, look ridiculous. So every so often, if I get one that has um, a hole, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use a bit of black paint and spray behind first before I put it on, and then you will not see like a white, sort of like a pale colour behind it. You'll see black, which will just look like a shadow. I think it'll look a bit better anyway. That's my, they're my thoughts. I had to put a rail in the bottom here, which I put correct a little box behind and just put a little rail on there, which seems fairly solid. Enough for this job anyway. It's not a customer's job, it's just for me. I just wanted to look a bit, you know, a little bit more, um, so I'll off these up first. I just a little bit, how to put it, a bit more earthy is what I want to look like. A little more earthy. Because I'm rather earthy, I like earthy stuff. <clears throat> so what I'll be careful of, I'll just put it around that much, but I don't really want the whole hair where, the, where this void is. Because the whole point of this is I want to cover all this up, you see, all the way along. And um, the reason for that is if I'm, if I'm doing my videos in the studio and all, my, all I'm wearing is a shirt, <laughs> I don't want you to see my danglies. <laughs> now that's a thought. What I end up with is the wide ones, the wide one there, as you see. I've always put an A in the corner to see what it's like. And then I've got another wide one this end. So that one must be put to one side for that end. And the rest will be however it comes, really. Now, the nails I've got a little bit on the long side. I've used all my 30 mils up. I can't, can't find any 30 mils. I've only got 40s, which are likely to go right through. Um, it feels like there's about 15 mil here. And these boards, on average, well, they vary from 20 mil to 25 mil in thickness. So the likelihood is they're going to go right through. And you know, all I do is I'll just nip them off with a pair of pliers on the inside because it's not as though it's a cupboard cupboard on the inside of this. All those drawers, I'll show you, or will be drawers. But well, they are drawers. I've got the drawers. I just I just took them out because obviously it makes it lighter. So they're likely to come probably poke right through. Um, the screws won't. The screws will be fine. Um, so all I'll do is probably go in there over the angle grinder, nip more off with the angle grinder, or I'll um, just pinch with a pair of side cuts. Because I only got 18 gauge nails. I'm not going to glue it uh, in this case. It's not a lot of point really. As long as as long as they hold on, that's all that matters. Oh, I put you over there. That. <laughs> never enough room. And you know these. Oh, so I've got, I'm using my phone at the moment, and they're never wide enough. So I've either got all or nothing. Yeah, I've got me, or we've got what I'm working on. And there's a mess absolutely everywhere. From when I was um, doing all these boards this morning, and you can see my floor is covered in crap. Everywhere is covered in crap. So I was all sort of masked up and what have you, and had the air filters going. But it's a, uh, yeah, it wasn't a very pleasant job, but I did it. And it's, yeah, ended up using what I got. Sounds fine, cool, lovely, jubbly. You don't want to see my dangly, Steve, I don't blame you either. They scare me every morning, they do. Now go away, stay away from me. No, you're too close. <laughs> well, I do find them a little bit, yeah. I don't know about you, but when you, when you start getting a bit older, they're not as impressive as they used to be. In fact, they're, they're downright embarrassing. Has anyone seen Bad Grandpa? The guy from Kick-Ass. Kick-Ass? Not Kick-Ass. Kick Jackass, that's it. I've got his name now. I've got to work out how we want these to go. And it makes sense to have the heavier boards nearer the middle because obviously there's nothing behind it. That's my thought anyway. Just offering them up at the moment, just, just give me some idea what they're going to look like. I know, they've, I know I've done enough, so I've already checked that obviously. Wait, I'll have another. Maybe a rustic one there. It's a bit thinner, that one. Da, 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 da. Right. 
probably all going to fall down now, aren't they? Just as doing this. You won't have to have it. be like a, a dominoes. Now, I kind of missed the point here because now all I've got is a whole load of oak ones together. I wanted to mix it up a little bit. So I'm probably going to have to... That one's definitely got... won't get holes. So that's definitely going to need to be on a solid. This one here, actually, is a thicker board. So that makes sense to go in the middle. <laughs> what did I tell you? <laughs> and they had my dump. You didn't see that, did you? No, of course you didn't. They had all my dominoes. So, put that one in the middle here as well. Because it's a thicker board. That will go there. Bum, 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 bum. So what I'll just use a nail gun to start with, and I'll fix it properly with the um, plugs and screws and what have you. That's my plan. I want one of those over this side, I think. The rest of one there. Ooh. What I've been doing is, on the tops and the bottoms, I've been just taking off the arras. <laughs> just to soften the edge, otherwise I'll just create those those like splinters, what have you. And also, it gives a better finish to the, to the piece up top here. So that's good. So I think that one can go there. Holy. Am I happy at that? I don't know. Am I being pedantic? Maybe, maybe not. Hey, back on there, you. <laughs> well, fingers and thumbs. And then that will be another solid one there, I suppose. And that will go on there. And then that will go on the end there. Now, that's pos now as I come across, I'll, when I get closer to this end, because I'm starting fixed on this end, on the far end, I'm going to start fixed. But as I come along I'm gonna to have to think, think ahead because obviously at the moment this is too wide so at some point I'm gonna to want to rip the board down I might rip that one down here a little bit because there's a gap there anyway so I can get rid of that gap um, but it looks like I might have to get rid of about two inches blimey I can't afford that ask the missus blimey so I'm quite happy how that looks along, along there you sort of, can you sort of see the look I'm going for? It's kind of like a rustic kind of upcycled kind of look. And all this wood <laughs> was on a pile of the garden, just covered in like leaves and stuff. Yeah, it was a bit of a mess. Anyway, I've got a beer today. I don't know why I've got a beer, because it's dipping freezing cold. I'm probably going to be peeing like a good one. Dee, 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 dee. Hello, Connor, how are you doing? Hello, Gingers. Oh, you, oh you've got some, you need something in your old desk? Yeah, I know, they get a bit, well, I, when, I can't remember when we bought this thing, it's, it's yunks old now, it's probably in the 90s we bought that, and it's so, that was okay then, do you know what I mean, that was cheap. But it um, just doesn't see what I want to do in my, in my little studio area. I want to keep it fairly earthy, because um, I also will use that studio for this channel as well, the woodworking channel, but also what I use it for... Um, another channel I've just started, it's only got about 70 subscribers. Um, Earth Trifle. So the whole idea is I want to keep everything sort of relatively earthy. So I can use the same area for all my videos, if need be. Try to simplify things. But also, I'll have it so I've got little like, signs and stuff, they just clip on. So I <clears throat> put signs on, like, yeah, like, for instance, with, this, with the other channel, with the All Shorts, I can have, you know, I told you so and stuff like, you know. <laughs> but we'll see. At the moment's early days, I just need to fix it all on now, don't I? But first things first, I'm going to put one fixing all the way along the top, bearing in mind, like I said, I need to work out how much I'm going to have to remove off some of these boards to get the last board in. But up to now, I don't really want to touch those boards anyway. Maybe not even that one. Because I don't want to trim that one, because it's all pallet. Um, it's got that lot of nails in it, where, it's fixed, where the pallet was fixed together. So I don't really want to be cutting into nails and do my saw any good. But this one could be cut down a bit. And that one could be, mm, yeah, even that one could be cut down a bit. So, and also that one, I mean, we'll see. 
Start there. Nail gun first. Which seriously needs a bit of TLC. No bolts hang on. This might help. Allen key first, just, just tighten that up. It's a bit disconcerting like that. Oh, that one. Aha. That one either. Oh my god. You never standardise anything, do they? There you go. They'll fix and try to break these super over a period of time. And these are only little 18 gauge, so not much more than little, like a little uh, little pin nails as well they are really. So I'll make sure I'm starting off right, so I get it tight at the top. I've got big gaps at the top of the nail, but I'm just gonna put one fix in each board, just hold them into place at the moment. So we'll put another fix in this one, keep moving. That's it. So I'm gonna push against then. Have it there. Da -da 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 -da. So I'm not gonna be using just these nails, little pin nails. Um they're like little brands is what they're like. But I'm going to be using, like I say, I'm going to be using the screws, which will, which will be hidden with the, uh, oh, with the plugs, like wooden plugs. So I'll be making some plugs in a minute. Now the, this nail gun is air powered, it's an air nailer, and it literally, there's a pipe. It goes all the way along the top there to my boom arm that I made. It's really handy because we can swing things about with that, you see. And I don't have to have like everything all over the bench. So I can swing it about wherever I'm working in this area. Um, and then also, we've got another one over there which is for the Hoover. So I kind of like to make weird stuff. And that goes through to the compressor which is in the other barn next door. And it just switches on by well, that switch there. That spur switch. Compressor! Another cool thing is actually, the, um, in here, I made this. See that, that box there? Uh, inside there is a circuit board, which I made. And uh, uh, it senses a load off this planer or anything else that's plugged into that circuit. So when the planer, and this planer as well, so when they turn on, it automatically operates the dust extractor in the other room. And there's a delay on it as well, doesn't it? So you don't end up having everything like loading the um, electric system all at once. What happens is that machine comes on first. I'll probably show you, it's probably the easiest way, isn't it? I'll turn it on. Woo! So the dust extractor doesn't, oh, can't, it doesn't actually come on immediately. So I'll turn it on here. You probably can't hear that, but um, I can hear it in the distance, the dust extractor next door, which is through here. It's probably still inflating a bit. It is. Uh, you probably can't see it. it's a bit dark in there, but that's still, that came on automatically. So it's quite a cool little switch, right? It's a simple circuit and it just senses the load and then operates the relay to operate the, um, the power. So it's quite simple, but it works as well. And it was cheap because I made it. Best way I like things cheap. Let's carry on. I digress. There you go. Hope the, the picture's okay for you. I don't know if it's buffering or anything, I can't tell from here. So it's a bit of wood bodgering. Uh, wood bodging is one of them terms, or nicknames that have been given to people who do a bad job. But actually, it originated from wood bodgers. So they would be the people working in the woodlands. Um, 
on the old treadle wood laves and stuff, making all the old uh, like chair legs and table legs and legs in general. You know, anything that's done with a draw knife and then finished up on, on the old treadle lathe. There's my lathe over here. I don't have to treadle it though. I just turn it on. That's quite handy to be able to turn it on. This one, that's my lathe and my chisels. So um, I'm going to do some videos with this later actually. Hello uh, Peter, how are you doing buddy? So yeah, the, the, the wood board was a person who used to make the chair effectively and the seat would be made by the uh, um, oh, the joiner in, in, the, in, in a, an actual workshop because they had to be all glued up but they weren't green. So all the seats, all the, the, sorry, the seat part of the chair would be seized in timber but the actual um, legs and spindles and all that sort of, were generally green. So, you know, Gemini green timber. And all done on the treadle lathe. Treadle lathe. I had a go on one of them, it's not easy, I tell you. But turning green wood is actually, it peels lovely, it does. It's beautiful to work with. Um, let's see what I'll sand it. <laughs> They'll do that. <laughs> but the thing about the tre treadle lathe, you, you, your body's moving. So there you are, tre so you're doing this with your legs, your body's doing this, you've got your chisel. It's hell of a skill, it really is. I, I don't, to, to say that they weren't skilled people was ridiculous. So it was a term that I, I kind of, uh, I, I consider a bit of endearment, right? Endearment, endearment? I don't know, something like that. I don't consider it as an insult. Not if you know the history. How is that? So I need to be careful here. So these boards, because I've been outside, they might shrink a little bit more. Although I've had them in front of my wood burner. Remember my wood burner? My steampunk wood burner. <laughs> that thing's funny. <laughs> um, and and uh, they'll be sitting in front of that. So they have dried out quite a hell of a lot, really, because they were a bit wet. So, yeah, let's that one on. <laughs> So it's, just a bit, it's a bit like, if it looks right, it is right. That's what I tell the missus. <laughs> so she says, in response to that, well, it's not right then, is it? Now I'm getting to the point, getting close now, where I, think I need to be thinking about this overhang here. So I'll just fix this last board on, and then I'm going to rip a couple of boards down just to try and get that that one to fit in. I don't want to rip this one down too narrow. For one thing it's got nails in it and I don't want to be running them through my table saw anyway. But also um I want to keep the width. It's all about the girth you know. <laughs> it's all about induendo today isn't it? <laughs> So what I need to do, I need to do something about these, because because there's light coming from the sides, because we've got lights all over the, over the shop, it's quite hard to escape it. I, I don't know if you can get get one, but you could do it with like a, a lens hood for a mobile phone, because it's just been streamed from, straight from the mobile at the moment. Well, I mean, so this one, I'm going to, I'm going to have to remove a little bit of material off it. Because I'll get rid of that gap also that gains I gain an extra inch. Woo saucy. Anyway, let's do that. Not that one. No. Over here. On this saw. I apologize in advance if the saw is noisy. But I can't do a lot about that because it comes with a territory. So at the moment that blade, in my mind, is a little bit on the high side because only could be ripping that like so so you're more risk of you know hurting yourself there's a couple of things about this saw that anyone who is a woodworker will know one thing there's no go on i like to see the thing that's going to bite me and also there's no riving knife i want a riving knife and i'm trying to work out a way of fitting one to this flipping saw um but when you the riving knife that comes with it is a part of the actual um, guard. And the problem with that is, it, it doesn't move with a flipping blade. So when you tilt the blade, so they, for instance, I tilt the blade like so, 
driving knife doesn't move with that if you take the guard off. It's ridiculous. So I need to come up with a solution where maybe I've got to weld something in there to mount onto the motor mount, which the blade is attached to, so the driving knife will move to it. I've got to come up with a solution. I really need to. I'm still not going to fit a guard though. I don't care anyone says it. If I'm the only person using the saw, I'm not fitting a guard. The only sort of guard I would actually tell a lie, I would fit a guard, just not the kind that comes with the saw. You can get a swing guard. And a lot of the, the old swords used to come with a swing guard, whereas the guard would be mounted somewhere else, be mounted somewhere else on the saw, like over here for instance, and you just swing it over the blade. Now, I, they, they technically really aren't correct because the blade has to have the side guards and all that sort of thing. You can't have that with a swing guard. I, yeah, but that's what I do. Have something because it, it's not about the fingers necessarily. It's about all the stuff that, throw, that gets thrown off the top of that blade and into your face. That's the bit I don't like. Well, I don't like the fingers going either. Oh, I don't, I don't know if you realise this. There's, there, there's a saw. I would be really interested in buying if I could afford it. Um, to be fair, it's not horrendously expensive, but it's still pretty, it's like four grand it is. It's called saw. Um, big cast iron saw like this one. But the beautiful thing about it is, if it touches you, if that blade touches your finger at all, it throws the blade down into, under, the, under the table. It's absolutely brilliant. Now, I've seen that shows and what have you, where they've done tests or yeah, sort of tests. Um, oh, well, they've, sh they've shown the saw. We're doing a, like a cross cut arrangement, so effectively they've got a slot. Um, one of these. I'll show you. Oh. Why is anything? Come here, you. That's it. I've got it. So they've got something like this. And they put, saw, put, put a sausage in there. Yeah, like one of them Frankfurter type, you know, like a knacky or a knack, yeah, knack sausage or, you know, one of them kind of broiler type sausages that you get at the cinema, they're absolutely horrible. And they do that, and all of a sudden the blade goes, you look at the sausage, it's got barely a nick in it. That's not a sausage, it's a piece of wood. But <laughs> brilliant saw. Now that's what I would like. And they're really nice saw as well, they're not, they're not rubbish. It's not a gimmick. A lot of people turn to those saws now because the cost, obviously the cost of the saw in relationship to your fingers is not a lot, is it? So I'm going to remove about an inch off this board in old money. Or is it new money now? I can't remember. <laughs> I'll lower that blade down to a more respectful height, just above a piece of wood. Let's put you over here so you can see a bit better. Just above the piece of wood now. The other, the other good thing about that is, is if you work to the fence, you're getting less influence off the end of the saw blade. Because obviously, because the higher the blade is, the more width that's exposed, and the more the saw has an influence over the direction of your cut. And, I, and my influence should be on here, on the fence. So let's do it. I guess what I'm going to use, I'm going to use a push stick. Because push sticks are always a good idea. Now my rule is, with anything like this, especially if you haven't got a, a guard fitted. Obviously you don't want to put your fingers in there, so what you do is you use things to stop you having to put your fingers in there, such as a push stick. That's always a good idea. But also, I never stand in line with that blade. For various reasons, the main one being is it throws rubbish off the top, it all gets in your face or hits you. Or if the piece of wood gets grabbed by the blade and thrown backwards, it doesn't gut you. Oh. I, I, I had a I, I had a scary, scary, or oh, I, I did have a scary incident like that a few years back. I was making my daughter a um, doll's house for Christmas, and um, it's a pretty cool doll. So she still got it. Her grand, um, her granddaughter's got it now. Anyway, I made it a doll's house, and while I was making it, I, I had a bit of a scare. I was cutting some thin old plywood, or was it MDF? I can't remember. Anyway, you know what it's like these days. Nine times at ten, it's never flat, it's like that. I was doing this while I was making sure the blade is just above the bit of wood, but wasn't quite high enough. 
above the plywood. And what happened is the square plywood that I was cutting literally rode up over top of the blade, went on top of the blade and spun round like that and hit my belly. All I had was a t-shirt on and I could feel it. I could feel, oh my God, what have I done? I had, a, I didn't want to look down at first. I thought to myself, oh my God, oh my guts are laying out. <laughs> That's all right. But no, I just bruised myself. I thought, God, that hurt. And I was black, right across here, like, like, like that. Completely black and really badly grey, so where the piece of plywood just, yeah, not great. So I didn't make that mistake again. No, that's painful. So, yeah, I carried on work, I, got, I still finished it. It was like a few days before Christmas Day, so I had to get it finished. But, but make sure there's no nails. I know there's no nails in it, but actually, what well, I'm thinking about it, I don't know if I can find it, that is. Uh, bah, 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 bah. I'm actually looking for my little hand, oh here it is, hand metal detector. There it is, oh. Yeah, it's like with them. So you, you turn it on, I don't lift it on if I do. But it needs a new battery. I think, yeah it needs a new battery. But basically, um, it's a little PP3 on. I, I run it over the wood, it goes beep, 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 beep. Oh damn, there's a nail somewhere. And these say, it's not a good idea. I know there isn't any nails in that, because I've already checked. For some reason, I think I left the battery on, the switch on. Yeah, that's on. Silly me. one I missed. I don't know if you can see it, but that area there, there happens to be a nail. So I need, before I carry on cutting, I need to get rid of that nail. I don't think there's one, there's one there. no it's not a story. But that one needs to go. I thought I got all them. I obviously didn't. Oh, that's got to look from that side, didn't I? Aha! That wouldn't have done my blade any good. It's a good quality blade, it's a CMT blade, but still wouldn't have done it any good. And I don't want to ruin my blades. In case you're wondering, you probably aren't, but I, I, you have two options with your blades, whether or not you um, send them to the saw doctor or whether you sharpen yourself. Now, if you're capable of doing it, you can sharpen yourself. And what I tend to do, I usually do about 10 sharpens myself, and if the blade has still got all its teeth, I then send the saw blade to the saw doctor, and they'll do a proper grind, where every single tooth then is exactly the same. Because um, eventually, no matter what you use, and I do have a machine for it, but it's, it's not that accurate. But it does do a good job. The only thing is, eventually, you'll end up with teeth. One tooth there will be lower than the rest. So it's not really doing its job, so it's best to get it reground properly. And they do a really good job if the blade's worth it. Sometimes when you're cutting this sort of stuff, you probably you know you might have killed the blade by then because obviously the nails. You might have got a nail in it. Not a great idea. No. So I took a little bit off that one. So that gives me a little bit more, a little bit more room. Not a lot. Not a lot. Oh, I have that one. That one, wrong that way out there. I like all these knobbly bits. That's what I like. Reminds me of my dimply bottom. Was that a bad thing? Probably. So, but you see here, I got a hole there. That's not terrible. Still overhanging by probably fifty odd mil. So I've still got about fifty mil to move. Now this board here has got a bit of a recess. This, which I actually quite like, but I need to get rid of it. Because either that, or I take it off this one. So I might take some off this one first, I think. Yeah. 
Yeah, we'll take a bit off that. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Right, hang on, I'll take it off this side. Oh, I don't know. Look at all this. It's a ropey board, isn't it? <laughs> it's like a glory hole. <laughs> Just winging there at the moment. Did it? Did it? So I wang that off there. I'll put this in my fire. Hope the fire's still roaring. Ooh. Ow, 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 it is. It's hot. All right. So I am going to go with. I might remove it this side, I think. I've got to watch over any nails. More luck than judgment, I think. Moving a good inch off that one. What type? Yeah. Closer. Oh. Did you all got nine people there? Hello, nine people. But yeah, I do. I need to make a lens here, don't I? I don't know how though. Um, how can I show you? <laughs> it's like a mirror. It's all over here. <laughs> well, there's a mirror. I don't know if it, can you see that on my foot? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to work. Go over here. Oh, maybe. Oh, get a burnt bum now. Over here is the lens. At the moment I've got a bit of tape near it. And it's it's not brilliant. Obviously, because it's not really it's not a lens, is it? So I'm gonna do I need, what about if I put the phone in, into like a box? That might work. Make it part of the holder for the phone for these videos in the workshop. Yeah, because that's the lens is just there and the problem I've got, I've got a bit of tape over that. <laughs> Oh, too much. And when you've got all these lights, they're always kind of shining where you don't want them to be, kind of thing, and make it glary. I think that's actually improved a little bit. We'll pull the tape out a little bit. So, yeah, it needs lenses. I need to come up with a solution. I thought about putting like um, an O ring over the, over the lens itself, because it's only a little tiny, little tiny lens, not on the phone. This particular phone is a OnePlus 6, they're really good. It's one of the little, little lesser known phones, but they've done really well. They came out in 2012, was when they first started um, hitting the market. So I've still got about oh, 10 mil, so 3.8. I've um, got another board. Eeny, beeny, miny, moe. Oh, which one can that be? Anyway, I might just take off this board at the end. There's only a tiny amount got to come off. So let's get them on. But first, what I've been doing is I've been removing a little material off the edge of the board with my little block plane. Which, where the hell's that gone? Why is it I keep losing things? I'm not losing my mind. I think I am. Oh, here it is. Whew, I was getting scared there. My little block plane, one of. It's not a low angle block plane, the idea behind it is the blade set at a very low angle and you can alter the actual mouth, the throat, where the blade comes out. So, you can, so if you're doing like fine, there goes my compressor. If you're trying to do fine cuts and you've got too much splintering, you can close the mouth down a lot more, like so. But if you want to take more material, you can open it up. Such so that, this one's gone a bit gummed up actually. Well, that's as far as it goes. So there you go. So what I've been doing is, as I go, as I've been making the cuts, I've been removed a bit of the arras. Not say the arras, it's basically the corner. Put a bit of chamfer on it. Same on the ends with the angle grinder.
also sand and disc in at the moment. So that's going to go on there. Put that way up, I reckon. But that one, if you remember me saying earlier, I don't want to see the pine behind. So what I'm going to do is, that one's going to go there, which it is. I'm going to just put a little bit of aerosol behind it first. That's where the hole goes. It disappears black now. Oh, you can't see. Blimey, you're all the way down there. Sorry about that. What I've done. <laughs> Well, where this one's got holes that like so, I don't want to see it. Oh, I'll show you a bit better. If it's on there, like that, you're going to see the pine behind, it looks a bit naff. But if you're where the black is, it just creates a shadow. It looks a bit neater. Is that being pedantic or what? Considering it's all crappy wood. What wood's left, that is. So that one's going on there. Fine, and then that one's going to end up going on there, and then that one's going to end up going on there. Like I said, I need a little bit more material off there, I've got to decide where I've got to take it from. This one's going to go that way up because, same problem again, I've got all this um, big hole. I'm not going to say it again though. Anyway, it's going to go on there like so. But I'll have to paint the back out, it's going to look terrible. I might even put a bit of wood on top of it, something that looks odd. So it looks odd. Or odder. So I'll pop there. I'm going to push off the edge of the... So now that one's going to go... But see better now. So that there, otherwise it's going to look like that. Which looks silly. So, it's first impression. Is it still, is it still looping? Was it okay now? That'd be really annoying, and that's what it's doing. Is it still looping? Is, is the video okay? Hey! Do you know what I did? It's something to do with my phone, Tommy. I'm not sure what it is. Um, but what's happening is it's... I don't know what's happening. It's something to do with my phone or the software or something. I don't, or it's the app, the YouTube app. Because as soon as I change the camera from front to back, if I just do this... Yeah, then back again. It seems to sort it out. So I need to keep an eye on that. It's very frustrating. Hey, cool. Cheers, Mad Mount. Cheers, Tommy, for letting me know. It's a bit annoying when that happens. It's not supposed to, is it? <laughs> so I don't know what the cause is. That happened to me the other day, actually. And also, that was happening when I was at Ginger Island as well with Graham Hughes. Where Graham Pommers were freezing. Um, I think he was using that restream thing at the time that was freezing on us. Didn't like that at all, restream. Tell bit of software. So anyway, they're all kind of banged on, you could say. And now what I'll do is I'll want to fix one a bit more securely, because it's not just the fact that you know, I could do waggling nails in there and think that'll be okay. But when I've got to transport this from here to upstairs where my studio is going to be, and the likelihood you get pulling the boards off, because these old nails, if I show you one, how can I show you one? I'll tell you how I can show you one. I can trick it like that. I went right through. <laughs> Okay, I just went right through. Let's do that. That's it. So they're quite skinny. They're quite skinny. So they're like, oh, they're quite deep. They're quite long, sorry. Um, the likelihood they could pull pull out, you see. So um, I'm going to be using some screws and plugs and what have you. Only if I get like a couple of screws in each board, that'll be enough. And then a few nails as well, maybe just to make W sure of it. But it's the bottom edge you've got to watch out for along the bottom here. Because as you start dragging this about, it's got nails like this. These, these, if they get caught anywhere, if they just, I know it's not fit properly yet anyway, but they'll just pull the boards off. You know, because there's no, these aren't ring shank nails, so there's no um, grip on the sides at all. They'll just eventually just pull out. So they're, they're okay. They've got their uses, but not, not for that. Definitely not for that. So, I'm gonna, so now I think it's going to be a good idea to, well, I'll start screwing the boards on.
and I've got my air, air drill <laughs> and I've got a battery screwdriver over there I'm just using um, inch half inch half eight so they're about 40 mil long four mil not four mil three and a half mil um, screws quite a common size they're possibly gonna maybe too long in some cases because some of these boards are thinner than the others this is obviously these are thicker 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 but some of these are quite thinner quite thinner they're quite thin boards so maybe if I have some, I'm a bit low on screws at the moment. Well, I've got loads of screws, not never the sizes that you want though. There's inch quarters there, that's what I could do with it. I've got three inch quarters here, well, there, three inch. They'll hold on the side here. No, not two inches, no, not three inches. Oh, what are these? Oh, da 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 they are. So I'll be using these 35, these are 40s, and these are 35s. Now, while I'm going on about screws, I get a little bit frustrated, I do. Tell the missus. Go ask the missus. Now, the reason I get a bit frustrated is, is when people borrow my, my screwdrivers and they use the wrong bits. They get confused between Phillips and Posi drive. Now, a Posi drive screw, I don't know if you can see it on there, it has these extra little bits. It's like a star almost. There's, I think you can see it, the little bit, what, the actual wings, or the little slots, are wider than the Phillips. So a Phillips screwdriver bit, it doesn't fit properly. So if I find you a, that's a posi drive, a worn one, and yeah, that goes into this screw, and it fits perfectly well. So it doesn't ride out. So you only get a load of noise, it doesn't, doesn't ride out so much. Whereas, if you had a Phillips, which is, that is a Phillips. It looks the same, but it's not. The wings are thinner on a Phillips. This is the old, old type of screw. Still used today, lots of, you know, especially in electrics, which used a lot. And if I use that in there, that would literally just constantly, it will fit properly. I can see that probably anyway, but that, that doesn't fit properly, I'll just keep riding out. Whereas the posi drive fits more snugly. And the same applies in both directions. So for instance, if you're using oh like plasterboard screws, for instance, are generally Phillips. That is a Phillips. You can see it's very thin on the black. You compare that to that, they're totally different. Yet people seem to think they can use a Phillips screwdriver in a posi drive screw. And I wonder why it's just jumping about all over the place. Yeah, you know, it keeps coming out and making a huge mess. Not great at all. So that's, that's anyway, I just want to point that out. <laughs> the pet eight. Oh, come on, Sensei, Dylan. Oh, just me in videos. Hi. Oh, who's making repairs? Do I have a burnisher? I don't actually have a burnisher. You're talking about like a, like a big mop. Um, I've got my linen shirt, which is like a big, a bit, basically like a big um, bandsaw, um, Jasper, a bandsaw. Belt, like a giant belt sander. It's, a, it's, it's quite a lot, it's quite a big one. And I use that actually a lot for doing my sharpening. I've got set up so, yeah, for doing, for the gra first gra primary grinds, for my planes and my chisels. Because it's flat, it does such a good job, it really does. You don't end up with any um, concave like with a Tormek or any, any anything with a round grinding wheel so it does work really really well really could do with that um then so i'm gonna have to come up with a solution for that because it is overexposing in places it's glaring a bit um lots of people saying oh there's nine people now hey hello guys and gals oh do hey you diddling oh it's time to stalk me is it oh i like a good stalking <laughs> oh, I've got water! Oh my God, who's got water damage? Constance, you got water damage. Oh, that's not good. It gets my ventilation going. You 
Yeah, I, I had a few issues a minute ago. I was streaming, and for some reason I was on a constant loop, spraying. <laughs> and all of a sudden everyone disappeared. <laughs> I wonder why. There's some sort of conflict going on with the software, I think. So yeah, anyway, anyway I'll, <laughs> I'll get back to the job. I'm going to put my screw... First I'm going to screw it all, and then I'm going to put all my plugs in. I haven't made them yet, so I have to make the plugs as well. Oh, and angle grinder version. Oh, why don't you mean? Yeah, yeah, no, I haven't got one of those. It'd be very handy, though. I could do what I, what I would like is, um... Oh, what, what the Rotex, and the Festival Rotex, because although they're very fast, you can put mops and stuff in them as well. Um, they're, not as, they're not as rapid, not as aggressive as angle grinder. Um, brilliant things they are, they're flipping expensive, like five, five or six hundred quid for a flipping sander. I ain't gonna be coming anytime soon. I can, I can beg the missus as much as I like, I definitely won't be coming. <laughs> oh, and anyway, I digress. So it's a bit random, as you can see. So I'm gonna put some random screws in to complement it. <laughs> So I'm going to start at the bottom, because that's where everything is kind of, well, not fixed at the moment. Also, the middle here, I need to be a bit careful, because here I, I want to put my fixes at this height, but where the void was in between the two cabinets, the rail is at the bottom, so I've put the fixes at the bottom. Anyway, start over here. What is heat going on here? Oh, let me turn it off. There you go. Oh, not in zoo. There you go. Because there's no fixings down the side, it's edge here, and it's like, that's where it's going to get knocked constantly. So I'll put some there. there goes my compressor. So I won't overdo the fixings because it'll be a bit unnecessary, but I want to make sure I'm getting them in the right places. So here's good. Time to fit three screws in. Oh, screwdriver bit looks a bit worn. <laughs> screws, screws, screws. More screws. And these are all different sizes because all the boards are different thicknesses. And I'll, I'll try and limit the amount of, um, well, <laughs> screw poke. Through where I don't want it to be poking through. That's okay, it's going to the edge of the board and the edge of the side of the cabinet. If you notice, I'm pulsing the drill, I don't just go wah until it stops. And that's no way of making sure that your screwdriver bit stays in the screw and doesn't ride out of the screw and bug all your screw, screw up and also your screwdriver bit. It's only a little 12 volt stand the um, battery drill. See that then. Well, I have to admit, actually, it's actually a really good little tool. We bought it with vouchers. I bought it with vouchers. <laughs> I bought two of them. They're actually really good. They certainly do the job. Oh, a short, short screw on there. Is that board in at. Not as thick as it. No, I'm using the short one. He's an inch. There we go. Now we're back onto this is a thicker board. But I want a lot, really, I'll put a line through. Well, I mean, two more screws going that bit. There's not much point, is there? I'm sure I can guess it. Now, is that one in the void or is it? Not. <laughs> so 
So who's um, ready for Christmas? Who's ordered their gammon? <laughs> oh dear. Poor old Nigel Farage got cancelled. I haven't read the gist of that as yet. But apparently one of his um, gigs, that cancel culture, was cancelled. He got cancelled every week as well at a uh, rugby club about some, I don't know what it was about, what the, what the gig was about, but he does keep getting cancelled. I do wonder what happens sometimes that, that he books a venue, or his marketing department or someone books a venue on his behalf and then they find out it's him and decide oh my god we don't want that aggravation we're gonna get so many complaints and then and then they cancel them that's what i think so it's kind of like <laughs> cancel culture's been <laughs> it's been cancelled <laughs> I just find that rather funny. I hear material prices in the UK are not getting any cheaper. I don't see how some people can actually afford to get anything done. Because everything seems to be so expensive over there, eh? Material wise. Show you a bit closer this drill. So, so what well, basically it's an all-in-one drill and countersink, but it's also that's 10 mil across here, so it can take a 10 millimeter um, plug. So if I drill this half. Like so that's created a clearance hole for a 10 mil wooden plug. I better be careful because I've got a funny film. I'm about to push us off the edge of the bench. So I better put that back. It would be a good idea if I put a clamp there. I'm just going to. I haven't run away. I'm just putting a clamp on the back of the bench so I don't keep pushing on the bench without realising and then push the actual bench onto the floor. Yeah, the desk onto the floor. It's just a G camp. I can see that happening. The sort of thing I'll do that is I'll all of a sudden be pushing and pushing and pushing and then it'll flop. So all I've done is just help, just put one clamp inside there. Probably do put them on the end as well really, but it's less likely to happen now. The other kind of things that kind of take you by surprise. Nigel Garbage. <laughs> oh, I did find that quite funny. I think that was, when I heard it first, I think that was from um, James O'Brien was talking about it. I did find that quite comical. And then we've got, uh, what was that? Um, oh, Marc Francois. You can't get anyone to publish his book. <laughs> he's got to publish it himself. <laughs> yes, he's done the memoirs of Marc Francois. Are you on, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really curious. I don't know. I, I think I actually want to read it. I just think it's going to be a, a very comical read. <laughs> he, he reckons he's got, he's got you know, he's had a lot of um, praise over his writing style. <laughs> oh dear. Let's make me tickle. We do see what's doing that. I didn't pulse it properly. I wouldn't put any pressure on the, the screw. If you, you heard that noise then, that was the, the screw, the bit riding out of the screw. Because I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. But I'm, I'm going to put screws up the top here as well. Where am I now? Got below the edge. Okay, we'll spill it.
Ito lang pam 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 pam. Oh, well, studio's look, starting to look quite cool. I managed to um, paint the walls where the studio, where the actual desk is going to go. And I've done sort of a dark grey colour, sort of mid grey colour, because um, my thinking is about the um, colour balance. I do struggle with the colour balance sometimes on the videos. You may have noticed. Neutral grey, your camera doesn't, just doesn't struggle knowing it struggles knowing there as much as it would do if you've got a, a green or something. It's really noticeable when you're using the green screen, it's quite hard to get your colour balance right. It overcompensates, and it either makes you look, um, try to average out the, the colour, and you end up looking a bit green yourself. We're watching um, Phil Morehouse today. I have to admit, his content, he's got some really good stuff going on, isn't he? He's really got, he's certainly got his, um, his research in order. Pull screws, put many owls. Uh, the studio itself, I can't see me get it completely finished um, before I start using it, if it makes any sense, because I've really got to get on. I'm getting. Oh, no, I forgot my, my black paint on there. Put in the owl. Oh, that worked. <laughs> right, so now I've got the top ones to go on. Top screws! Do -do 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 -do. Ah, Tommy! On German Rage Day in Berlin and Brandenburg clubs and bars can stay open, but dancing's not allowed. <laughs> really? Oh, that's nuts. You got to go to a club, but you can't dance. What's the point? Why don't you just close it? It's people just drink, I suppose. The problem is when you get a closed um, space like that, you can't avoid it, can you? The, the, the viral bodies are going to be everywhere. Silly. You're right, Tommy. The world's gone mad. So I hope it went too loud. Now these are a bit random when I put these screws because I've got to try and find sensible places to put them, basically. Now along the top here, there's a little piece of wood um, behind here. There's a big void here, but there's a... It's only dropped down by about an inch, so these ones are going to be quite close to the edge. I'm just going with the flow, really. There's nothing. What, what, we don't always have to be hard and fast with stuff, do we? You know. Oh, you can't do it like that. It's not how it's done. I think sometimes you just ask yourself, does it really matter? What I do like is that you can actually, with a bit, of, a bit with a bit of thought, you can. To use stuff that would either go on the fire, that would just go on the fire. Because this stuff, that's all that happened with this, isn't it? That would go on the, on the fire, been, um, yeah, burned. I 
with this job, it doesn't matter. It's, it's not, I'm not exactly making a carcass with it, it's just covering up. The only thing I had to do, I had to treat everything the other day. That's so why I, I, I haven't actually got on with it for, for a little bit because um, everything was wet from being treated. And I hate using chemicals, but you've got no choice. Besides, he's bought these old bowls that had, um, not that one, not that one, but these ones, they had termite in it, so I had to soak them. There's no termites in them now, I'll tell you. <laughs> Bastards. Ooh, I'll put a screw in there, but we went actually in with. I'm going to have to redo that one because it's missed. I think that's the edge of the cabinet. So I'll just put a screw in. Actually, I didn't put a screw in there at all. Put that out. I'll just plug that. I've missed the cabinet at this point yeah, on this one. Got, there's an end carcass on this end, and there's an end carcass on that end, and there's a void in the middle where your legs go. Um, obviously, you still get me in from the other side. But where I put a screw in here, it's literally in the void in the middle, so it's not screwing into anything. So I'll leave it out, I'll just, I'll just plug that. That's what happens when you wing it. So that needs to, that needs to screw it up the top instead. Feeling generous, put two in it. I can hear my dogs. Now, once I've done this, I'm, oh, excuse me. Once I've done this, I've got to go and walk the dogs. And um, I should have done it earlier because it's been peeing. It wasn't too bad earlier today, and now it's peeing down outside. So it's not a very pleasant walk. Not for them either, because they don't like come back all wet and horrible. I'll still go though, I'll still want to go. But it's not so nice for them. We're quite fortunate here because we have to, we have got lots of places we can take them. Some lovely places as well, you know. Um that video I made a couple of short videos yesterday while I was on the walk with the dogs. It's quite hard to keep an eye on the dogs but make a video at the same time. Multitasker I was. Right, a few more in there, and I think that's probably, apart from the plugging, I'll be getting close to being done with that. There's a few more screws to go in, then we'll cut some plugs. Uh, is it on? Oh, I don't know if it's in or not. She's in England. She's got regret now because obviously she's, you know, she wants to see the kids, the grandchildren. But then, they, like I say, all the rules have been changed. So now she's got to get PCR tests um, and register and what have you, which is a hassle. But this is what I need to, you just got to, you know, that's what I said to her, you want to go back to England, or visit England, and, um, <laughs> Times what they're like at the moment. You don't know what's around the corner. There. You don't know what the how the rules are going to be changed. That's a good reason for them. As far as I'm concerned. We have a our selection of idiots here as well, though, French and English, who don't understand the necessity of wearing a mask. But on the whole, I have to. Oh, do another screw there. On the whole, I have to admit. Pretty much everybody is wearing masks in the supermarkets. Well, they are. Everyone's in the supermarkets. You have to. So I made a mistake the other day, actually. I was after I dropped the car off at the airport and uh, in the Boj. I went to uh, the family village and I, I, because I was going from one place to another, I just I thought I'm not going to take the mask off. I just dropped it over my chin, drove to the next bit, got out, and I forgot to put because you feel it, you go on. So I forgot to have my chin. As soon as I went to the door, literally within seconds. I was pulled up on it, you know, put your mask on, you know, sort of an embarrassing moment. Um, it's easy down, I suppose. Obviously, 
it's not probably because I'm anti-mask wearing, because I'm not. I think it's a good idea. If it can keep the um, flu infections down at the same time, that has to be a good thing, doesn't it? Okay, so they're all screwed on. I've got to get some plugs. You better not... No, you ought to see me dance anyway. Are you dancing or drunk? <laughs> okay, Duke. Oh, Jasper, you, you said you had your booster the other day. Are you okay? You, you said you weren't very well. Say that, Pete. Take care, mate. Oh, okay, Ginger. What you is? Oh, you have got the metal um, studding. You talk about you got. You talk about the metal studding. So you got your passport or metal studding? They use it a lot here in France. It makes a lot of sense because, for one thing, it's you know it doesn't catch light for a start. It's relatively cheap and, quick, and actually really quick to put up. I don't like it personally. Hunt's wall that collapsed. Who's that? So I'm confused, Jess. What's that mean, mate? Sorry. Hello, Jeremy. How you doing, buddy? Ha! <laughs> that would be quite a good idea. <laughs> Make some Muppet puppets. Muppet puppets. <laughs> Tory Muppet puppets. I could do that. Blimey, I've made puppets before. Or wooden ones. All painted up. Not long. So it'll take like, quite a while to make them. They're not, they're not quick. I bet I'll be a bit quicker these days, mind. Yeah, it's cold and wet hair as well. Mm. It's born. It's quite cold. Quite cold. There's a bit of rain in. It's not quite as. Ah, uh, Jenda, how you doing, buddy? It wasn't quite as cold, but um, yesterday it was freezing. When I went for a walk with the dogs, um, absolutely flipping freezing. It's quite difficult. When I went in the video, so I was actually struggling to talk. <laughs> I couldn't like, get my. Um... Oh, you okay? No, no, just. Oh, that's good here. That's good. I had my um, flu jab the other day, and although I was fine after that, my arm was flipping sore, it all but it swelled up a bit. It just sore to touch. I felt fine, but it just felt sore to touch. But that happened when I had my um, uh, vaccine as well, COVID vaccine. <laughs> That's a good one, Patrick. So wearing a mask is not a political statement. It's an intelligence test. That's actually, yeah. God, there's so many idiots out there, aren't there? There really is. Anyway, we need to cut some plugs. Uh, I'm just going to do it on this um, pillar drill, which for some reason I got back, and I don't know why, it is uh, the table. It's got some corrosion on it. Oh, oh, they're not the foot. You stay on there, you. So how got all... Where's that all come from? I ain't got a leak in the roof or anything, but this is all corroded. And that's from the time I actually went to Ginger Island with Graham Hughes and got back again, and it's all picked by this. Now, I've got a funny feeling something's been spilt on it while I was away, but I can't imagine what. Anyway, there's a bit of oak, there's a bit of quartz soil on oak. If you see oak and it's all like this, yeah, all those motley bits, that's and it's caught and sawn. That's how it's been cut in a certain place in the tree. So you get this, like, this lacing effect. It's quite pretty, actually. It's shanky sort of plugs. I wonder if I've got a better bit than that. I can't really do much with it. Is that a bit better? Oh, there's a crappy bit. There you go. I'll use that instead. But this particular bit in here is hollow in the centre, and the dimensions of inside this hole, inside this bit, this plug cutter, it's the same dimensions as the um, cutter I was using to do the counter sinks for the plugs on those screws. So anyway, let's turn it on. Let's turn it a bit higher. It's not really flat. I'll do this from this side. It doesn't matter where you do it. There's a few little tricks you can do. If you've got to hide the screw. 
obviously this is one of them. And they look fully hard to you can see the plug. Yeah, you know, even with sand it down, there's still evidence that there's a plug there. Within reason. It's fairly disguised to be fair. But there's a trick you can do with a chisel. So what you do is, where you decide where you're gonna put your screw, you peel a little bit of um, wood away with, it, with a sharp chisel, preferably a bevel edged, a proper bevel edged chisel. Peel that bit of wood out of the way, then put your screw in, and then, with a bit of glue, over the top of the screw, and the, obviously where you peeled the piece of wood away from, you then bring that piece of wood back down over the top of where the screw is, I usually use a piece of plastic or I have a piece of, another piece of wood with some tape on it so the wood doesn't stick to the glue and clamp it down. It sounds like a plug, but it's not. And, you know, once it's gone off and you remove your clamp and your piece of wood, you have, you know, you've hidden your screw. All you've got to do is just sand it a little bit and it's the original piece of wood covering where the screw was, or is, sorry. Um, so it's completely, you, you pretty much, you, you know, you can't see it. Sometimes it works out better than, than other times, but on the whole, you can't see it. It's really good. It's not, it's not a great way if you've got loads of screws to fit in. If you want to hide the odd screw here and there, you know, it's a perfect solution. No plug cut is needed. I need quite a few plugs, I think. Now, um, our letterbox here, we have letterboxes, as in that metal box outside that we made it. Well, the box that we got, I made it look like a house, so I basically made a wooden house to go around the box. And that's now look worse for wear now, so I want to make a new one, I've got a few ideas for it. So, um, it might not actually make, look like a house anymore, it might be look like something different. You know, I've seen some quite cool ones, like, like, like animals and stuff, so... Good fun. It's quite funny though, because when, when I'd actually um, made that, quite a while ago now, <laughs> well, shortly after, someone else did the same thing. <laughs> Just down the road, the next hamlet. So obviously, I must have saw it. But I didn't have it before. It's a bit of fun, isn't it? I like a bit of fun. I'll be glad when I get this studio done though. Oh, crikey. For days like today, there's no way I'm going to go outside for doing videos. It's peeing down. Yeah, your equipment gets all wet. And your camera. <laughs> uh, you think, so how do you get these plugs out of there? You're going to use these, these little wooden plugs. How do you get them out? There's well, various ways you can do it. One is I could then just use a back the band saw and it should cut them off. If you run the band, you know, run it through the band saw this way up, sort of cut it up down there, and then all the plugs fall out. But the other way you do it is, well, the way I normally do it, is literally just a screwdriver and just pop, they just pop out with a screwdriver. I think that's enough now. I'll do it for now. Do, 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 do. Right, I am going to be making some proper videos later as well. So, um, some you know, when I get, once I get this all sorted out and get back in tr on track again, I missed a screw. I need to put a screw in there. I don't know what I'm going to do with the top there. It's not probably nothing at all. The top in vapory. But you're, you're not going to see that in the videos, are you? You'll see this, and you can you know, see a bit of the top, bit of the edge of the top, but it's going to be covered in stuff. Oh, I've got, on my videos, I don't remember, if you've been with me for a while now, um, I used to have uh, a lot of sound effects and stuff. I don't want to put loads in, because I think I was overdoing it before, to be honest. But I want to get back, when I'm doing the live stuff, I've got to get back to using the soundboard. A bit like um, Nick Gabbett. On the LBC radio. What that? It feels. I think it feels. Attached. 
everywhere. So let's, oh, no, what do I need? What do I need? I need a hammer. You need a hammer, I've got a hammer. Where's my hammer? I've got a hammer like that. It's a little ball pain hammer, because it's got a ball at one end. Pain on the other. <laughs> no, that is the pain. <laughs> really what I call it, pain is for painting. Do, 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 do. Constantly hitting metal. <laughs> Right, where is the other hammer I think I don't quite often use this? Little four hammer. Now I used to use these when you're doing the um, plastic faces. You've got the plastic headed nails. So you use a four hammer like this one on the nylon head for knocking your plastic headed na nails in. Because if you use something like that, you just damage it. And when the heads get a bit manky like that one is, you can just unscrew them and put a new head on. Works really well. I'm just going to use that one. I need a bit of glue, get tangled with cables here. I really need a really good clean up again. I really do not like it when my, I'm a bit pedantic with that sort of thing. I don't like it when my workshop's untidy. I like to have everything, everything must have a place. That'll do. What's something to put a bit of glue into? I'm just going to use a bit of PVA. No, it's not ketchup, or in this case, caramel sauce. No. <laughs> you try it, but I don't think it'll work. Come on, I'll just leave that for a bit. I was doing that. I'm going to pop some... I'll just leave it down there, just let the glue work its way to the end. I don't use a lot of PVA. I normally use some... Um, oh, we call it? Casca, might you? Padres and wood glue. So, let's pop them in. First of all, I need my bit of wood with the, oh, it's here. I need a screwdriver to pop them out with. It is actually better to do it with a bandsaw. Which I could show you, actually. Because I've got a flat edge there. I could do some of it bandsaw. The problem is, because it's, on a, it's not flat, how am I going to get them? That ain't going to work. Not going to work. So I'm just going to use a screwdriver. So let's just put a screwdriver down the edge of them, like this. And they pop off, pop off, and end up on the floor. Yeah. Just like that. <coughs> Got a few days back now, so we can knock them into place. That's probably enough. Well, I'm not very really good with my fingers because I've had the operation carpal tunnel. I'm a bit sort of fingers and thumbs. So let's you find your hole. So there's one there. Look. Try and keep the grain in the same direction if you can. And then tap it in. Done. Next one. And you can remove that afterwards with um, either a chisel or just, set, or just sand it flat. It's up to you. They're a bit big, these plugs, in the sense they're um, a bit long, but it gives you something to hold on to when it's longer. Ask the missus. That's why she's disappointed. Sorry kids. Oh, I thought about kids. I've got too many I have. I did offer a diary, but no one no one took up the offer. Oh, I knew then what I'd know now. I'd have just had dogs. Nah, that's my kids are good actually, to be fair. Look up with me, poor devils. Oh, that knee popped out. Get in there. That's what it's in. Just pop a few more out. You can cut these plugs with a just ordinary drill. That's quite tricky though to keep the drill straight. 
once, once they get in, they're fine, but they you can wobble about it a bit while they got that in, you're trying to make that, because there's no pilot hole on the cutter. So it's best to have a pedal drill. Dum bum bum dum dum. And once I've done all this, I will then go over it all with a bit of sandpaper here and there and make sure there's no rough bits that you get splinters on. But won't no splinters. So a bit of sandpaper, a bit of a bit of hand wire brushing. If your wood is hard, you don't need to do anything, just put it like that there, just it's literally just poles put. Now I won't be knocking the I won't be cutting these off just yet. <coughs> well say I said there's two ways to cut these off. The other one is using a little pull saw, little flush pull saw. They work well. If I've got one there somewhere. I'll show you. Well then. This is a little Lidl's one that's crap. So if you <laughs> but it's alright for this job though. You literally just like you could chop them off like that. Other than that, use a chisel or a sander. I'll just use a chisel because I want to make it look tight, you know. If you don't want to do that, you can just leave it. It'll be funny, you chop this, you could probably just leave them. Already knobbly, isn't it? Oh, yeah, that's the what this is the screw that I had, uh, that didn't have anywhere to go. I filled that hole up. I hope I've done enough. It'd be annoying if I haven't. I had a random message of Graham earlier. Some com uh, some comedy thing. He thought that was me. But he's been funny. <laughs> I was actually watching Graham's um, stream the other day. Uh, PMQ's one, and it, it, it was a bit too much swearing for me. I didn't mind a bit of swearing, but it was like, oh my god, this, Graham, you sound like an angry old man. <laughs> he's a funny man. He is. Uh, I'll work a bit on here. I like this travel stuff, that's what I like. It's got a lot of knowledge. I certainly learned that when I was spending that time with them down at Ginger Island. Neglected you. Yeah, well, I did a video. I uploaded a video about that earlier today. It's frustrating. I did it on the basis of what Angela Rain was saying. Um, oh God, yeah, that's just they're just terrible. <laughs> Poor Jim. <laughs> Are we getting five? No, I, 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 I don't know about you, but I, I think they lied about that. I, I, I haven't got no cheap internet at all. Still on the pay. I was hoping I was going to, you know, pick up my four G, if not five G. Actually, we've got a five G area on there by now. In, in rural France. Problem for me is my, my internet here. When we were on Orange, which is like the landline, um, ADSL um, broadband, my God, that was so slow. It was terrible. Very, very, very frustrating it was. So we'd, um, I did my research on that. Went around, found all the antennas for 4G in the area. One at St. Ansegal, one at um, 
or all severe. And then we found another one in um, Pre de Pucanu. And, uh, if, and with that in mind, we then decided that we were going to go the 4G route, and we still are. We've been doing that for about four years. <laughs> it's been pretty good. On the whole, it's pretty reliable. Darn sight better than what um, we were getting. We were getting about half a meg before. Thank you, so obviously I couldn't do this on half a meg. It's not possible. So we just, um, yeah, we get about, oh, it varies actually. Well, most of the time, isn't it? it varies, doesn't it? But on the low end, it'll be 40 megabits per second. On the high end, it could be anything up to 100. But on, the, on average, around 60. That's download, not upload. It seems to be capped the upload to 10 megabits per second for some reason. But that's fine. Yeah, that's, that's, it can do, it can handle this. You don't get too many dropouts. It's been far more reliable than we were getting with um, Orange. But they are digging up everywhere at the moment because they're they're putting in all these new um, oh fiber fiber stuff. Fiber optics are going in at the moment. So if they do, I'll give it a little while and make sure it's it's you know see what the neighbours how they how they're you know doing with it. And maybe I'll go over to that because one of the things I have to do is, which I don't, I have to really compress my videos because our internet is capped. Um, we've got two connections here, so basically two SIM cards for the house, and it gives us 300 um, gigabits, gigabytes, gigabytes, yeah, gigabytes, terabytes, gigabytes, whatever it is. Um, and although it's not, it's not too bad, but we we're quite close to the limit, so I have to crush the videos down. Bit too far, especially I've been doing a bit too much recently. I think it took, took some of the quality off it. You know, the loss of formats, so you, you end up losing that edge. You know, the sharpness of the videos. So my phone does actually a really good job, but I, when I get into the studio, I want to be using my camera camera, which I've got a Lumix G, G um, Seven, and um, that does a really good job for video. It's really good. It does four K as well. So I won't be able to use, be using that in the studio. So I hope I can, I can improve the quality and also the sound. It's one of the things that really bugs me. Now this little microphone is quite good. The only thing is, I find with my voice... <laughs> don't laugh. With my voice, it tends to um, peak sometimes. And I get like a whole high frequency noise going on in the, in the, in the audio. I've been trying to sort it out. I can't seem to. I still have that problem with it. I don't know why. It's under the microphone, the other microphone, the um, my fluffy microphone. Is it in there? No, it's not. Left it in the office. No, my, my other microphone, the, 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 which I use outside generally, um, I have no problems with that. But the, the only problem I would say is you end up being too far away from the camera, so then you've got ambient noise. So if you've got a lot of noise going on around you, you're picking all that up as well. But these microphones are quite good in the workshop because I'm moving about all the while, you see. Sometimes, you know, I'll be behind there or something and you wouldn't hear my beautiful voice. No comment. Please. <laughs> Oh, died up. Oh, my God. Yeah, I remember that. That was terrible, wasn't it? When um, I got a bit of a background in news at the radio station, and um, we, did, we were doing really well, actually. It was an internet radio station at the early days of the internet, and we had ISDN lines, and each one was 64-bit, and we were streaming radio on that. Um, it was working. It was really, really quite good. So two of them, 128 um, kilobits. <laughs> And we're broadcasting to Sky. In fact, actually what we were doing, we were broadcasting to Kingston Media in London, and then the via uplink via satellite, it then go to to, yeah, to the Sky satellite. And uh, we, we were doing, we were selling advertising on, on the radio station, but it was all unsigned music. It was, it was, it was, it was doing really, really well, apart from my brother-in-law is, uh, well, it's problem being, it's, think of like Boris, yeah, he's like Boris Johnson, I would say. Yeah, crook. So, yeah, I left it because um, that's my business. You know, we're partners, but um, when you start ripping the bands off, that was it. That was it. I can't, I can't cope with that. 
if people got, you know, people are struggling to actually work all, you know, work really hard to try and get their bands recognised, and then you've got some lines, tow rags, signing up to co and to contracts. But yeah, we had Leona Lewis and people like that, and shouting for girls and what have you. It's got a scam song, I can't remember now. Losing my mind. I already told you that. Right, um. Leona Lewis played on our radio station before anywhere else. It used to be called Pulse on Signs. <laughs> it changed itself to Pulse Rated. It's on Wikipedia if you have a look. But we did manage to get the um, BBC Music Awards, online Music Awards. And they came second, I think it was, about second or third or whatever. The fact we got nominations was pretty darn cool. For the best oh, online music website, that's right. I've had meetings with people like, uh, oh, Branson. I've had a meeting with Branson before, years ago. Lots to do with um, Oxfam. <sighs> Doesn't like this bit of wood. Come on, you got it. Very interesting times, I learned a lot. I built, I built the servers and that myself, and um, yeah, and these are bits of software called Jazzler. Oh my god, I keep breaking off, there must be a crack on that bit of wood. Oh, that's tight. Yeah, this bit of software called Jazzler, and uh, they were on the forefront of it already in the sense that. They had a security system where you had to actually buy a key for the software to operate and you put it into a USB port. That was when the um, bank started all the uh, little keypad things. So inside some of these original holes. I don't need them anymore. Oh, it's getting hot. Not right there. <laughs> not many. Is that enough or not? No, no, we're near enough. Bugger. A very dodgy picture of me. It looks like a parrot. I've got my hair all dyed. That it's um <laughs> back along with my mother. <laughs> Sideburns. <laughs> oh God, so this is driving me insane now. It's over. Is that a useful plug? It is. It's on the other side. Here's my problem with it. I should really go and get another wood ready. It's because of these cracks. So what's that? It's going partly through and it's coming across these the floors and then just break it off inside the cut. It's over here. I don't need them anymore. sound.
don't know if anyone living in Europe has noticed that if you haven't got a VPN, the likes of um, Netflix and a lot of those sort of channels, the online cha- online um, movies, streaming, what have you, like uh, Amazon movies, Amazon films, what have you, and um, even though I never. I never generally use a VPN anyway, so I just go along whatever they're offering. But recently, there's a lot less English-speaking films. I've been watching them in French recently, and you don't realise how bad the dubbing is. It's hilarious. Oh, my God. And, and, and French... Produ- Oh, can't be sci-fi films. Oh, God, forget it. They're terrible. Really no budget. Even the story's crap. I haven't found a decent one yet. There you go. I've got enough now. I think so. There, there. I hope that rain stopped. Really, really oh, I feel guilty if I don't take the dogs out. Well, we'll have to take them out anyway. I can't, I can't not take them out. They can want to do a wee and stuff, haven't they? They end up doing it in the house. No, they won't. They're pretty good. How good's my French? I really struggle with pronunciation. I read a lot better and hear a lot better than I can speak. I really struggle with pronunciation. My English is bad enough. I have lessons every two. I have two lessons every sorry, two lessons every single week, and still I just I just really struggle with it. Especially rolling the R's and that sort of stuff. Oh crikey! I feel, yeah, I feel, I feel I'm spitting over everybody. <laughs> and that fact, I got a plate now as well. Oh, God. that's why I dentist the other week. I had to have a plate fit. I wasn't going to bother, but um, I can't. I need to get implants really, but I can't afford them at the moment. There's only two teeth at the back, and uh, now I've got a plate, I fill up. Blah, 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 blah. I can see it with a torch, it's, it's a spit fly now. <laughs> That's great for COVID. <laughs> I need a spit guard. That's where a face snap That's what they call them, isn't it? <laughs> but the, I was talking to a dentist about, about my. He's a Portuguese guy, really lovely chap. And uh, really caring. He's really good, the Miss Cowan's really nervous about a dentist. And, um,. Anyway, he was talking about, well, he mentioned to me, actually, that you need to get these, um, have something there. Otherwise, if there's nothing for your teeth to push against, eventually, they'll try, like a splinter coming out of your, your body, it will uh, they'll eventually push out. So you end up losing the teeth opposite. They, should, you need, they need something to bite against, or you'll lose them. I don't want that to happen, because I, there's some of my better teeth. My nobodies. Okay. I don't know how I'm going to decorate this, or how I'm going to decorate the um, studio. So my worry is, like filming the political channel, all shorts. If I put anything political fixtures that are political in the studio, I can't really use it for anything else. <laughs> So I'm going to have to have some things I can move. So I think I'm putting some shelves behind me, you know, make some open shelves up to go behind me in the corner. I've got some sound boards I need to make up um, because I need to get rid of some of the uh, resonating, you know, the echo. So basically they're going to be um, like a soft porous cloth on a, on a wooden frame, like, like a um, canvas type frame, but with... Um, a soft can with, with a soft, almost like a blanket facing material on them and um, packed with fiberglass behind them. Just in case you're wondering what all these little boxy things are on my walls, my doors, and up there, that's what they are. Otherwise, in here, well, it did before, and you see it with a green screen, you see that it's actually a bed, that's a mattress in there. <laughs> Let me show you. <laughs> That, that's a wooden frame, covered in a bed sheet, 
an old bed sheet from Nagas. And inside that is a mattress. The idea being is any sound when you're doing the green screen here, blah, 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 blah. The sound, instead of being bounced around, it gets absorbed by the soft, soft materials. Because in here, it used to echo like crazy. It's, it's a loads better now. It still echoes a little bit, but nowhere near as bad as it used to be. So kind of I've got to think about in the, um, in the workshop, um, in, the, in the studio as well. Otherwise, it's going to sound awful. And I want to use my decent mic up there, you see. That's my plan. So I've got a decent mic on my, you know, proper condenser mic on my um, desk. You know, in the uh, office, that goes for little mixer and stuff. That's a really good mic, I was well using it with the um, soundboard and stuff before. So it's wasted where it is. So I'm just going to use my little USB mic in the office and move that one into the studio. You yeah, know, mainly for the um, videos I'm going to do at this desk. And my little seating area as well. So I've got a little casual seating area I'm, I'm going to have up there as well. So they're just little, little sets, basically. And then I've got the green screen area, which will just literally be... I'm not really certain how I'm going to do the, the sound of that yet. <coughs> I can't really do that one very easy with the uh, um, mic, because that will be filmed using the phone on the green screen. It just works so much better. And plus, the, the, the format is designed for mobile phones. So it just makes sense to use it. Cause they, they are, yeah, the, the little, I'm talking about the little one, the, um, the green screen, I'm talking about the uh, shorts that I do. Little vertical shorts. No, I'm nearly there. Getting closer. I forgot I just wanted to, I keep, I keep forgetting that you can swap the camera around. See, that camera's better quality. There you go. I do miss the music though, because I used to play quite a bit as well, but I can't anymore. I really struggle. I used to play guitar. And my drums. Well, I was, I was learning the drums, so I was getting okay-ish. And it's, um, but recently, since I had the operation, I keep dropping the thing things all the time. I don't have the dexterity as I used to have. Dexterity, if I can say it now. No wonder I can speak French very well. For lack of trying. Oh, it's going to do this. See all the textures. I still, I quite like it. Oh, it's like a little weathered shed. So all those little knobbly bits are going to have to be cut off. Ideally, probably just with a chisel. Well, I, might, I might not take the wire back, I might even just attack them with the um, oh, sander with the ang and the angle grinder. Just attack them with that and literally just um, soften them a little bit, mate, so they're not sticking out quite as far. And obviously, anything like that, I don't want glue sticking out really. So I might have to take it all, all the way back. I don't know yet, I'll see. I'll probably be pedantic. End of the day, it is pretty rustic, isn't it? Oh, Mr. Screw! Mr. Plug. There you go, I'll go put that in there like that. Have I got all the plugs? Can I, have I got them all? See, the other thing I might do is I might use those old rose head nails that, um, that accumulated over half. I could, you know, clean them up on the angle grinder. I don't go do it on the wire brush. Right. Necessary, probably even necessary. You wouldn't see them as a thing, as we were thinking about it. If you put anything on there, that's right, yeah, that bit of iron or something, they need to be something a bit more big, rah, chunky. Like me. I don't believe it. I used to work out, I used to be quite muscly, and now I'm just fat. <laughs> I'm also doing the work I do as well. It's always been woodwork, and it's, yeah, a lot of site work we used to do. Oh, just read, look, I just saw another one I've missed. Oh dear. What am I like? Last one. Tap it in there. There you go, I know you can see that. But I think you've seen enough of me putting plugs in. So yeah, okay, so that is... I think it looks alright, that's going to be okay. I just need to clean up the ends. But you're not going to see these in the videos. 
you're just going to see the flat, you know, of that. So, and that's the side I'm going to see, which is obviously it's got all little drawers to go in there. Bits of tape that my daughter can put everywhere. So, um, that's a pretty roughly constructed thing. I didn't make it. I can't remember if we bought it or it was cheap or something. I can't remember at all, but um, probably made in India or somewhere like that. It's pretty rough. But, you know, it's going to do what I need it to do. So I'm going to rig it up with the mixer and stuff all built into the um, into the desk. So it's not obvious. And my sandboard. It's a bit, I don't know. Have you got any idea to sand, uh, you know, any sand clips? Be quite cool. So I've got a plug, the charger back in. Nearly done. So I'm going to be calling it in a moment. I've got two hours. So you know what? Yeah, it's plugged in. That's good. Yeah, so, um, come on, tape. Yeah. <laughs> Where's my bear anyway? It's nearly all gone. So, yeah, I want to put the sound. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to use the sound board again. If you, you press a button and it, you know, it'll play a pre programmed sound. So, it'll be some kind of clip of something or sound effect effect but you, yeah you, it's what used to be early videos always have sound effects i think i put too many in before but you know dope <laughs> okay so it turns out the capacitor bank i built on my minecraft island doesn't actually work okay <laughs> i don't know what that's, i don't know what minecraft is but i've never played it Looks like a boot print. Oh, I, oh, Tommy, you got a music studio, cool. Yeah, so um, you used a mountain for EOE years ago. And when we used to do the old radio station, and uh, we used to go around people's little studio, put on some studio, you know, to interview them. And um, literally, that's what they have, literally, like old bed sheets, duvets, you name it. And what, 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 one chap, he had this um, arrangement, made of pillows, basically. He has a microphone. Was he has a microphone in front of them, and like pillow, 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 and some sort of crate arrangement. And that was just like a little sound booth, and he was singing into this, you know, on, on you know, in his bedroom, into this microphone. But the sound, it did actually work. That's the point. It's it was very crude to say the least, but it worked, you know, and his audio was really good. It's amazing what you can do in your bedroom. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, cheers, Mad Monk. Yeah, it looks all right. It's, yeah, it is what it is, isn't it? It's just a bit... It's rustic. It's using what I've got. It ain't cost me anything. I've got a few nails, screws, stuff like that. Always heard the noise when faxing. Oh, dialed up. Oh, God, yeah, yeah, Facts. Yeah, yeah, I get you now. Yeah, I just want to dial up. Oh, dialed up was awful. Oh, egg, oh, egg crate. Yeah, that was, um, I was actually looking at it online, actually. They did actually have some in our local DIY, it didn't you say? But that, that looked like just packaging, that was rubbish. But the, um, I did see some online as well, um, some egg crate. But you can quite easily make sand boards up. They're just like a wooden frame, and you just literally staple some material around it, and they can look quite cool as well. And just hang them on the walls. That's what I'm probably going to do. Got visitors? Oh, no. Keep them away, they might have COVID. Jasper. Do, 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 do. Oh, crikey. Yeah, we know your sort of photographs. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> I bet, Jack, hey, Patrick, I bet you're on have porn sites, weren't you? Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, wow, you realise it's a bloke. <laughs> Oh dear. I'll just ask me after my wood I'm not putting wood stain if not on this. And I, I don't like varnishes that got stain in them. I always do um a dye first. Oh 
We hit the biotech. Oh, you do a flu jab, did you just be videos? Oh, cool. This is a bit out of protection, isn't it? Oh, nice one. Are you getting your booster? Cool, gingers. Well, I'm going to call that it because I've done what I'm supposed to be doing. Oh, you found the offending capacitor. Okay, Duke. <laughs> Hit it with a hammer. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm going to call it it. Um, I've done what I needed to do and it, I think it looks okay. Um, I've just got to do these bits. Like I say, get rid of these little knobbly bits and the old plugs. I wasn't going to get caught anywhere stuff, aren't they? So, um, might find some old iron work or something I can chuck on it to make it look cooler. But at the moment, I'm quite happy with it. And um, it's free. It just makes it look a bit cooler because it looked like they looked really shit, to be honest. Yeah, but it better look. There you go. That just looks like a big cr wooden crate. <laughs> it's not exactly fine carpentry, is it? No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, okay. Thanks for watching and, um, I, I, well, I might catch up with some of you on Max's stream tonight. Tonight? Yeah, that's Friday, isn't it? Yeah, Friday. I keep missing it. I'm with my head's at my bottom at the moment, so. So, anyway, ta ta, and thank you for watching. Da -dee 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 -dee. I can never find the button. Where's the juice? It... No, that's what. There you go. Are you sure you want to stop straight? I don't really want to, but I need to walk the dogs. So, ta ta.